Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And today on the Hermitcraft server, we're going to be talking about what the hermits can accomplish when they all work together. We recently covered Doc's perimeter with grass. Uh, don't try looking for the grass. Apparently Doc has undone it somehow. You'll probably want to watch Doc's latest video to learn how, because I got no clue how he did it so fast. He's really, really zippy, like quick, 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 boom. But speaking of quick, 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 the Hermits actually hosted a charity event last October where we raised over a quarter million dollars for Gamers Outreach. And I have finally had the opportunity to visit the Vanderbilt Children's Hospital where some of those carts, eight of those Gamers Outreach video gaming console carts have been helping children for months now. We should go buy some Skulk to place on these drop target solar panels once Scar gets here to talk about Gamers Outreach. I am very excited to talk to Scar, who spearheaded the Gamers Outreach effort on Hermitcraft. Lots of folks chipped in in lots of different ways. Each contributed in the best they could, but Scar was the one that really led the charge. So, why don't we run in here and grab some Skulk. I've heard that Asuma's floor has the skulk on it. And I think Asuma controls the top floor. Turn torch to select floor. Press button to confirm. Okay, I've never used this elevator before. Whoa! It's fine. I've always taken the stairs. Okay, well, there's Skulk in the floor, so this is probably the right place. How do I buy the Skulk? This pricing makes no sense. One diamond for 64 items, one diamond block for a full box. So right now it's already set to Skulk. One diamond, put payment in barrel, and press purchase button to purchase. Hey, it broke the block for me. Whoa, that's cool. Okay, so how do I... So I... This is now set to floor one. That's terrifying. And then I just fall? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and talk to Scar. Time skip. Sir Joe. Scar! Welcome to my pinball machine. Where you at? Oh, you're so sneaky. Scar. Where'd you get? I'm Joe, here. I didn't know you had a hole down there. Oh yeah, there's holes everywhere. What does that sign on your head say? And may one to Scarland. Joe, it's a gift for you. Oh, <gasps> oh my gosh, that's the. You got to use the turnstiles. Oh. Stock up on some food while you're there? Why is this welcome to the happiest place on Hermitcraft? <laughs> and it's huge. It, apparently. If I switch to like F5 mode, oh my gosh, it looks like that I'm like outside of a cell phone store about to swing this around. Oh, that's so cool though, Scar. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to fold this up and put it in my pocket for later, okay? <laughs> that thing is so ridiculously big <laughs> I love it Thank you You bring so much joy into people's lives um, And I actually I'm really glad that you uh, took the time to stop by today I just got back from Recently visiting the Vanderbilt Children's Hospital To check out the Eight gamers outreach carts That they've got there That's awesome that they got eight I don't know if this is true Joe mm -hmm. But it seemed like gamers outreach reached out to the hospitals Specifically the ones too that, that you know the hermits asked for And they were like how many would you like And some people were like do you think we could just have one? And then some were like, hey, can we have like a 10? <laughs> and they're like, sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's how I envisioned it. I don't know if that's true or not. Well, no, that is part of it. And I was talking to Anastasia, who works for Gamers Outreach and who actually visited mm -hmm. the hospital with me. I got to say, I really appreciated then having somebody also checking on things from their point of view, because I knew that if there was a problem with something that I didn't know how to fix or how to address, she would mm -hmm. know where to send them, right? Um, oh yeah, but yeah. Okay, so I found Anastasia's my notes. Great. 
Absolutely. Like the the whole team over there, everybody I've interacted with seems like really on the ball. And that's what you want to see with a nonprofit. Vanderbilt Children's Hospital has 345 patient beds for kids. Now they also have a thousand outpatient kids come through every day. They don't use the go-karts for those. My daughter was one of those kids. When she needed her tonsils and adenoids removed, we went through the outpatient surgery center at this children's hospital. And that was why I put their name in because I knew from experience that like they did good work. They seemed to really care about the kids. They were really supportive mm -hmm. of, of the families, which, you know, was me in that case, you know? And um, so they were saying though, the, the eight go-karts are just focused on the 345 patient beds. Two of them are dedicated just to CF and EMU patients, cystic fibrosis oh, and, oh yeah, go on. What is that? Is that epilepsy monitoring unit? Yeah, yeah. So the epilepsy the monitoring uh, unit. So they said that for the epilepsy monitoring tests, the kids have to stay in one place for an extended period of time. And so having that the, been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, I'm that. sure it's not great. And they said being able to have enough carts that they could keep to set aside just for the cystic fibrosis tests and the EMU tests were really helping the kids who were there for extended periods of monitoring to not just like get stressed out and like, you know, start getting agitated. Yeah, especially with the um, the monitoring for epilepsy, because at least when I was in, in that unit in my hospital, I was there for four days. Oh, geez. Um, so like having the like the head, all the monitoring attached to your head and some stuff on your chest and then um, you can't really leave your bed all that well. And then, mm -hmm. you know, if you push the, the button, right? So if mm -hmm. you push the button, like maybe you're feeling a symptom and you push it, the uh, the door opens, the lights turn on in the room, like full, full on, like full brightness. Oh, no. So you could go from like pitch dark to full light and then they like come running in. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh. So if a kid gets a break from playing that during that process, like you said, that will help. I would assume in the testing that they're not kind of like agitated and frustrated and stuff like that. So that, that's that's cool. I'm, I'm glad a cart went up to that unit because that can be very, very isolating in there. Well, before we get uh, too far into this, I actually brought some blocks so we could work while we talk just because, you know, YouTube is a little bit of a visual Put medium. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, what, what you've uh, accomplished and what all the hermits have accomplished is so cool. I don't want people to just tune out because it's like us standing here, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so where, where are we going to start? Where, where's the plan here? So basically, uh, whoa. He gone. Don't do that. Don't do that, Scar. That's not, that was, that was not what to I do. I didn't do anything. I okay. was on my best behavior. You, you're doing great. Okay, so basically these drop targets on the pinball machine here have you seen a you know what a pinball machine is like what drop targets are you hit them with the ball and they go down under the play field yeah yeah it's been it's been a little while since i've seen a real pinball machine but yeah i mm -hmm. gotcha i gotcha okay so these seven drop targets represent a head-on view of the chandra x-ray observatory Ooh. viewers can learn more at chandra.harvard.edu it basically has this circular thing that's like the monitoring instrument that like measures x-rays and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's got three solar panels on either side. And in a real pinball machine, your drop target would be like plastic, which we've represented with bone blocks here. Oh. Because like I thought x-rays, bones, that's, that's kind of funny. I don't know if it's a joke, but like whatever, it rhymes. You would have a decal on the front of them that ties in with the theme. And I realized that these skulk sensors look, or, or not skulk sensors, skulk blocks look almost exactly like the type of solar panels. So basically, we're going to come up to each of these uh, kind of uh, drop targets here and just put a decal on it by applying skulk in front of it. On oh, I gotcha. That's awesome. I yeah. love that. So it's just a nice, easy thing we can do while we talk. Joe, we're both making like our dream bases. Like you love pinball, mm -hmm. I love theme parks. Oh yeah. We're, we're making we're making dreams over here, Joe. We're making dreams. People talk about like how do you avoid getting burnt out on Minecraft? And I'm like, because build I build things that I can never stop being curious about. Exactly. I always want to learn more about like it's a fractal interest. There's no limit to how cool the insides of a pinball machine get. You start looking at how individual pieces are made or how they all fit together at every level. It's just neat, you know? And like what you're doing with your park is kind of the same way, you know? Yeah, I always tell people you need to find a, an idea in Minecraft that generates infinite ideas. 
Mm -hmm. and like your pinball like there's so many different facets of this machine that you've incorporated that you can just go forever it feels like same with me and my uh, theme park i just go and go oh absolutely but uh, you know uh back, back to the hospital thing i gotta say i was talking to them about like well what did you guys used to do before you had these carts and they're like, well, we had a few donated consoles or whatever, and we would have, like, baskets where we'd go in and, like, plug them into the TVs and the rooms. But, like, that's not great, you know? Uh, it's, it's a lot of extra work carrying around and plugging in and unplugging things. But then also, um, you know, they were saying, like, one of the great things about the carts that they can roll in and roll out is for the patients who they need to spend some time resting in bed, but they also need to spend some time trying to like practice walking and moving around again. Always having mm -hmm. the machine in the room was kind of like a temptation to stay in the room. But with the rolling go-karts, they basically say, hey, we've got this in here for two hours this morning. Then we got to bring it to another kid's room. So why don't we take you down to the library after that? And you can go pick out a book, you know, and then they ah, I like that. That is good. Yeah. Or they would say, hey, we have um, they have like playrooms for the little kids and like lounges for the older kids, which also have mm -hmm. like air hockey or uh, video games or whatever. And they might say, hey, Dude. we can take you to one of the lounges in the afternoon. Now, because of COVID, they've got very strict limits on like how many kids can be in the lounge at one time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and not every kid's well enough to go to the lounges. So, I mean, the go-karts no. are great for them too. But yeah, they, they talked about using the go-karts as like a way to enforce kind of a cycle of rest in the room and then activity elsewhere you know that's really good I, I love the people the child life specialists the occupational therapists there must be fantastic because mm -hmm. knowing all that keeping kids on the move and this and that is really good my experience in being in hospitals there was none of this there was no there's no air hockey there's no air hockey <laughs> nothing well um, I, I will say the air hockey table I, I have to give credit where it's due uh -oh. that was in not good no, 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 I'm, no. This is credit where it's due in a good way. This is not me blaming somebody like, how dare you donate an air hockey table? Uh, so the uh, Nashville hockey team, the our NHL team, the Nashville Predators, actually financed one of the lounges uh, oh, that's for cool. some of the teenage kids. And uh, they donated not only like the fittings and fixtures and furniture for the lounge, but also an air hockey table because it's, you know, oh, thematically. That's cool. that's cool. Yeah. So maybe you just don't have a good enough hockey team up there, Scar. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I don't know if Portland has a hockey team. Well, I mean, you got to You clearly need to work on that next, because when you put your mind to something, it comes to fruition. Yeah, I I just never been a big hockey guy. I oh. but I could be. I just never got into it. Oh you my know, God. sports that might might be right up your alley. You just never been into Can it. I, Maybe I'm a hockey guy at heart. I have no idea. Can I tell you one of my dreams? This is like one of those yes. bad ideas that like everybody will yell at me, but I think we should do it anyway. Um I think that we should talk to Mrs. Tango about his game schedule and like pick one of his hockey games where he's playing, right? Like cuz he plays in intramural hockey. And we should get as many hermits as we, we can to go up. cheer for him and then like take him out and hang out and get drinks later. Cause you know how we're always talking about like, we need to like pal around more. Yeah. Like, and, and we could coordinate this with his wife. So it's like not a week where he has something else. Like she could be like, Oh, Hey, my sister wants to do something that night after the game. So keep that clear. And he'll be like, Oh, I don't really want to do that. But fine. You know, that sort of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so we go and we all do a go cheer for him during the game. And he'll be like looking through the glass I don't know if you've ever been to a small hockey game like this, but they are the best. Because, like, at an NHL game, like, technically, it's like, yeah, these are the best players in the world. But you're sitting, like, 100 feet away, 200, 300 feet away. A small local hockey game like this, you're just right up there on the glass. And then, like, you know, just the, the, the players are, like, slamming into the glass and the puck is right there and the action's right there. And so Tango would just be able to look out and see us. And be like, what? <laughs> what? What is this? <laughs> what? We're just all shouting, Tango. Tango. Oh, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. It would just be like, it would just be like my head barely poking over, like, like the, the railing. <laughs> Speaking of heads barely poking over, I'm like, let me, let me fall down here repeatedly. Um, yeah, uh, let, let me show you a little bit more of like what we're working on around here, if you don't mind. Yeah, let's see some more of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, this is this is very work in progress. This glass here actually represents the underside of the plywood. The plywood that would make up the playfield 
would be about three blocks oh. thick at this scale. And I thought, I'm going to paint the top of that, you know, paint with like concrete blocks and, and colorful terracotta and yeah. stuff. And But when people fly around underneath it as that part of the electric course, I want them to be able to look up and see like the art from the underside. So I'm not going to... I like it. It's a sturdy undercarriage. I like it. Oh, exactly. It's great. And so, you know, this has given me a, a workspace too as I like start embedding like, oh, this is where this light's going to go. That's where that light's going to go. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I see. You know, so the drop targets are one of the first like things I actually have popping up out of the play field there. Mm-hmm. And that actually basically looks exactly like the Chandra X-ray telescope head on now that we've put those decals on. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. Thank you, Scott. That is look cool. Yeah. Um, up here where we've got this ball, this is the scale. I don't want to get... Yeah, sorry. I don't want to get oh, too out of range. A, this is a scale? This is to scale? Right? This is to scale. So this is what we nice. would call a captive ball or a trapped ball. Sometimes on a pinball machine, you would have a ball that's like held in place with like pegs or something. And then when you hit it, it flies backwards and hits a target. Uh, oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, this is not all mob proofed yet because I'm still like laying it in, and usually I run to bed because I'm not in the middle of talking about beds. Like, yeah, they're adding two more floors to the Van Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, and uh, so yeah, they were like, "Look, if you want to send us any more of these." Um, oh, back to your thing about hospitals asking for particular numbers. One of the things that Anastasia mentioned is a lot of hospitals have really tight storage concerns, mm. and so the next generation of cart are going to fold up so they can store better right uh, and ship easier because the, ship the easier. current ones are very expensive to ship because they're one unit that has to go mm -hmm. on a pallet and then that pallet that goes in like a a shipping container if it's going to go overseas so these new ones can be packed into boxes and ship way more efficiently so that's mm -hmm. huge that's, oh yeah that's that's really exciting when those the, when those finally do ship out yeah, so, so what Vanderbilt was saying, though, was because of the way that they planned their, like, uh, floor plans for their hospital with the—they have, like, a lounge or playroom on every floor, they basically say, well, the carts are in use basically from dawn until bedtime or lights out, you know, whatever. And so, um, basically, when— the carts are done for the day. They just roll them into the nearest playroom on that floor. I just pictured like a prison. And lights, like, lights out. Lights out, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. It's so exciting to see these carts out in the wild now. So exciting. And you were able to see, you know, like these things are really made well. Like they have height adjustable. Mm -hmm. They can, you know, wheel right up to the, the patient's. So everything is thought of with these things, which is incredible. They're very robust. Yeah, you can you can kick it hard. When you are working in a medical environment like that, like all of the power cables, anything that connects into the wall, it's like these like really high gauge coiled cables. The director of child life and volunteer services at Vanderbilt uh, Children's Hospital is the one who actually gave us the tour. And, nice. Uh, no, she was uh, talking extensively about like how like big an impact this was and and like how much they appreciated us. And like, I'm not used to being treated like I'm important. And I also felt kind of silly being treated like I'm important because I was there representing and on behalf of the, the viewers, you know, our audience, mm -hmm. I was there to make sure that their money was being well spent, you know, um, yeah. which is, I, I admit, important. But like it was it was a very, very interesting experience, you know, uh, uh, being shown all this behind the scenes stuff. We actually got to meet um, somebody from their oncology department uh, who was saying that they are continuously maxing out their allotted carts. Um, like they, some days they have a waiting list, like, you know, Hey, oh, if, wow. if one kid decides he doesn't want to play it, they're like, that's fine. We got another room to take it to right now. <laughs> we got another room. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, if, if this kid wants to read a book, good for them. We're going like, <laughs> oh my gosh. That's but good. Yeah. And they're, they're adding two more floors, um, because there's so much demand. She didn't have an exact like number on how many beds that they were going to be adding with the two more floor addition, but it'll probably approach a hundred more beds of overnight wow, care. That's a, yeah, that's like two more units or more. That's a, that's a lot. Um, yeah. yeah that's well, a, that's a lot depending on how many, depending on how many people are on each unit. But the, yeah, that's, that's a lot. 
Well, um, I mean, she was saying they have 345 beds now and that they had occasions in the last few weeks where they had 350 patients who needed beds. And that's a bad position to be in, you know? Yeah. When you've got every bed full. So the fact that they're already working on construction and expanding and, and stuff like that is, uh, you know, really cool. Yeah, that, 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 that kid is either going to the adult hospital or getting left in the emergency room. <laughs> like, uh, that's, and neither is that's great. unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're, they're doing their best. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a challenging thing for an urban hospital in a state where the rural hospitals are closing, you know? That's, that's really unfortunate. It is. That, that makes that makes care so much worse for the people who live in the ruler areas. Exactly. And they were saying that one of the big advantages of the go-karts for the people who are coming in from like other parts of the state is like those people if they got to the hospital and the kids like, "Mom, dad, did you bring my Switch?" or "I I forgot my favorite game" or whatever. Like they can't just go back or anything you know like they're here now uh and also though like a lot of the parents um the director was saying get really anxious about their kid being hospitalized and they're staying in a hotel or staying nearby or crashing somewhere in the hospital mm -hmm. if they can you know or the ronald mcdonald house or something and like they're stressed out and the kids stressed out because they're in a hospital and hospitals are stressful and everybody's stressing out and like stress is like not good for health in any situation, you know? No, and it's not. So like sometimes uh, the hardest thing to accomplish in a hospital is what they call normalization. Like just giving people mm -hmm. that brief breaks from everything being terrible. And like these carts, you know, the, they'll roll them in and the, the kid will be like, dad, mom, you want to play a game with me? And, you know, the carts have multiple controllers and stuff and they're set up. For a multiplayer, even though in a lot of cases it's one kid per room or one kid, you know, yeah. obviously per bed, um, it the the kid's siblings or parents can take a break from freaking out about everything and just play a game together, and like they said, you know, they can tell like the tension and the stress just is alleviated briefly. It's you know, obviously, it's still a situation that's stressful and is going to make any parent nervous, but like just having that break for a little bit can be really impactful and that they're uh, very, very happy with what they see when the parents play with the kids, especially. That's, that's good. And I also think when, when in recovery, when kids can get themselves distracted from, because a kid, a kid will often, especially a younger kid will, will fixate on what's wrong with them. Like they have a cast on, they have an incision that's healing, like they'll fixate on those things. Mm -hmm. And if you can divert their attention to playing Minecraft or something like that, maybe that kid will need slightly less pain medicine, or maybe they'll be slightly less stressed out about the thing that they were once like hyper fixated on. Um, all those things can and can actually help in the, the healing process. So it's not just even just, you know, getting a break, which is great too, but also maybe they need less pain medicine and hospitals already employ like music and this and that to try to do it. But I think getting a kid engrossed in playing, you know, a game can completely like take them out of the world that they're existing in, in an unfortunate place, which is the hospital. So it's, um, it is great. What I love about what I hear from Vanderbilt is like, they're mm -hmm. really employing these carts in like such a clever and well-used way. Oh so yeah. That's, they, that's really like their child life department must be fantastic. I mean, I, I'm an alumni of the university that was affiliated with this hospital. And so like I have been in and out of the Vanderbilt ecosystem since 2004. You know, it's one of those things like they say, like, oh, if you work at a restaurant, you might never want to eat there, you know. But there's been <laughs> yeah. there's been one restaurant I worked at that I, I was just like, no, this is run exactly the way I would want it to be run. You know, like I had been working with people from Vanderbilt hospital system for years. And when my kid needed surgery, I'm like, well, I'm obviously going to take her to that one. Like this is, I like, I've seen how the sausage gets made and it gets made right. You know, that's good. Um, that, that's good to know because yeah, my experience in children's hospitals weren't always the best. So I'm glad yeah. that Vanderbilt's doing it right. That, that makes me happy. And to know that they have, all these carts that they're putting to good use. So that, that is, that is really good to know. 
Yeah, and, and getting the cards. So they didn't have all these success stories and stuff to share. So that was one of the reasons no, I, no. I wanted to share this with when you. When I visited, that was the first Gamers Outreach visit um, that Gamers Outreach has done since the, since the beginning of the pandemic. So that was mm -hmm. their first one. And so then they had just received. So um, the children's hospital I went to was in Randall. It was Randall's Children's Hospital in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And they had just received them. And what was nice about that is like they had just gotten them and uh, Zach and Anastasia were able to give them like right then like a ton of information on the carts. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really cool to kind of see like them working through some ideas like do we give the kids Internet access? Do we not give the kid kids Internet access? Do we allow mature games? Do we not allow mature mm -hmm. games? You know, all sorts of like really interesting um, like questions that I thought were quite fascinating, like they were trying to figure out because mm -hmm. this was this was way new for them. They were like, wow, these things are great. Like we're just scratching the surface on what we could do, which is also that's interesting to kind of see where they were going and then to see where you came from, where they had the cards, they've used the cards and yes. they're now being well used. So they have a lot of like feedback and knowledge uh, from their use with them, which is great. Yeah, because they, they, Vanderbilt got the cart carts months ago but they didn't want to have too many visitors while they were still doing a lot of covid precautions i mean even when i was in there like i was wearing like an n95 mask and you know it was yeah. you know serious stuff um but like i gotta say one thing that they had figured out too was they're like okay yes you can open up the carts and there is like a hardware toggle for allowing internet access that's like locked inside the the um the casing right so yeah uh, there are some kids who, if somebody is technically like considered a ward of the state, like if their parents committed a crime and they're like in the uh, foster system or something like that, mm -hmm. they're legally not allowed to have internet access unless certain situations are met or whatever, right? So okay. what they've done at Vanderbilt is that they've allocated like, okay, certain carts always have internet access, certain carts never have internet access, and we make sure that kids who can't have access to the internet they never get a cart that can. And so they never see us open it up and turn it on and off. Right. You know, there's just, we roll in the one that doesn't have <laughs> the kids it. are crafty. They'll figure a way into there if they know that there's access. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's going to happen. Like if, if, Oh wait, there's a <laughs> switch in there that you can flip and all you got to do is unlock it. Well, let me, uh, <laughs> we were kids at one point, Joe, we know these things. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Like that's the thing is like when my own kids like, Oh, you could get me a phone. It'll have parental controls on it. I'm like, Parental controls are meant to teach children how to defeat computers. Like, and you're not old enough <laughs> Their yet. Their first hacking. Yeah. Like, I know exactly how to break all of this stuff, and you're going to know it too. And like, but we're not there yet. We'll get to that later. Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, yeah, that's hilarious. You posted the thing. Um, yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> but but yeah, so that way, though, kids who don't have access to, uh, or who wouldn't be allowed to have access to the internet still get to play games and still have access to carts. That's really good, you yeah. Know, they just... Uh, have them restricted. Um, yeah, it's. I know it's, the hospital I went to. They decided that while we were there, they decided we'll allow teenagers who are appropriate age for the appropriate game to play the game, but with their door closed. So if they wanted to play Call of Duty, they could just, just close your door. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, yeah, because you don't want other kids like being like, "Oh my gosh, is this what war is like?" <laughs> you got one kid playing gta in one room yeah <laughs> uh, oh that's that's great that 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 is great and when you um so when we went i think zach was saying that the number one requested game always in the hospital mm -hmm. is always minecraft that's that's the number one requested game and then every console is also equipped with a ton of games mm -hmm. already like installed on it so publishers um xbox microsoft they give them a bunch of codes for the the consoles so they're, they're they're pretty stock with a lot of good games right off the bat but but kids are always like i want to play the minecraft mm -hmm. well i mean that's the thing though is it's infinite legos what kid's gonna get tired of infinite legos like what adult is gonna get tired of infinite legos scar my pinball machine ascends to the heavens and depicts the skies themselves you know like <laughs> it's fine like this is what i would want to play if i was in the hospital you know yeah exactly i think uh, one thing they said um they were planning because they just got the carts right and they were just throwing around ideas um mm -hmm. 
they said over the over that week before we came was that they would set up a hospital server so kids could play together on like the hospital server so they could you know build and play on the server with other kids in the hospital which i thought was really cool yeah that's really neat i uh a lot of hospital networks would not be willing to try that sort of thing that's a sign of a very good and active IT department. That's great to hear. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I, I don't know. Like these, the kids these days in these fancy hospitals, this hospital had a theater. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. There's a theater in the hospital. And she goes, yeah. And we use, every night we have ice cream. And I'm like, oh, my God. When I was in the hospital, Joe, look, indulge my quick rant here. Mm -hmm. I was given a checkers board. There were missing pieces. I had to improvise with other pieces to make up for the missing checkers pieces. And the TV was black and white and didn't come in. <sighs> oh, no. Like, like I'm happy so for these kids. I'm happy for them, but I'm also jealous. So when you say the TV didn't come in, like, like the Twilight Zone wasn't showing in its original black and white. It's the static was showing in its original black and white. Yes. Oh, jeez. I mean, maybe people don't even know what static is anymore if they're just on their iPad, you know, bringing up Netflix or yeah, it just says HB, HDMI HB no Max signal, so whatever it's called. Like oh, it's just Max you don't see now. static anymore. No, you just see four hundred one error. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Well, I gotta say, the yeah, Vanderbilt Hospital did have a stage, and um, so you know, because they bring in like country music stars and whatever, and they've got this uh really cool stage area where um, kids can, like, roll up in wheelchairs, and there's also places to sit and stuff. Um, but then they also will broadcast it over the closed-circuit hospital television network. Uh, mm. So kids can watch in their rooms, even if they can't go down there and meet their favorite country music star or whatever. But uh, That is cool that the country music people um, come there and do stuff. That, that's really cool. Yeah, well, you know, because Nashville is, like, such a musical like we're a cultural city you know people here mm -hmm. make entertainment and so you know uh and and like if there's an opportunity to give back and, and like i said like this is the hospital that like people take their kids to as well you know this is the hospital i took my kid to is some country yeah. music star if their kid needed uh surgery this is where they would go you know yeah. and so yeah like a lot of us locals will have like a personal connection with this hospital and we'll want to repay that any way we can i'm so so grateful to you and the other hermits and our audience for creating this opportunity where i could you know suggest this hospital and get them eight carts which is just this beautiful wild gift well beyond my own means or capabilities like it's 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 the coolest thing I've ever done, possibly. And all I did was say, yeah, this kid's hospital could use some of these game stuffs, you know, like and then. Yeah, the I got to say, that our audience showed up our fans. Our audience is so generous. And like, I, I just I, I went in there and I took it very seriously. Like, I'm here partially as an auditor. If there's something wrong, you know, we've got somebody here from Gamers Outreach and I'm going to bring it up with them. I'm going to bring it up with the hospital person if they're, but like no imperfections noted. Like they're, they're nailing the execution on this as far as I can tell. Like, yeah. And you, you, you know, they, you know, like you said that earlier that, uh, you know, they, they treated you like special and they should, like you donated to that hospital, probably anywhere from like 25 to $40,000 worth of equipment. And that's a very that collective you. That's a very collective you. But, you know, like, you, you <laughs> I know, was you, representing you, you, those people, though. Yes. Yeah. But everybody in Hermitcraft, you know, put in the effort and then the audience, you know, supported that and, and made this all possible. So it's and, you know, like one of the things that was important, I, I felt like when when choosing this charity was that it had the component that we would be able to show the audience that. You know, their hard earned money went to a cause that is helping a kid in a hospital mm -hmm. because, you know, our, our, we want to respect the audience and respect their money, respect them and mm -hmm. to show them now that there is something because so often a lot of times you give money to a charity and you kind of follow up with them afterwards and they're like, hey, we'll get back to you. And you never hear yeah. back from them. 
And this way we can show like this, this is an actual piece of hardware that a kid, there is a kid 24 hours holding a controller to a go-kart that we donated 24 hours a day. There is some kid around the world with that controller playing. And we, we have, I don't think, I, what, what's the old saying that they said in England? The sun never sets on the kingdom. Well, the sun never oh, sets on a gamer's art reach the cart. Sun There's always somebody outreach. playing it. Oh my God. <laughs> There's, the sun never sets. So oh. there's always a kid somewhere in the world we're playing a game in the hospital, which is really cool. It just it just brings me so much joy. And it it really just I, I, I cannot express how much the director of child life and volunteer services there was just like, y'all are doing really good things and we really appreciate it. Like like you can't understand every day how many people this helps like we we witness it and we don't but we're not them we're not feeling what they're feeling yeah. but just like seeing what they're feeling and trying to explain it to you we're coming up short and so like i'm like third hand trying to explain this but like i just want everybody who did uh contribute to this uh october charity event from last year to really know that you know what i showed up and did my diligence and this was this was a good good thing that we all did it's yeah great yeah and it, it uh yeah i don't know i think it was it's one of those moments in hermitcraft history that will go down as like you know something really cool that we all did together like covering doc's parameter there's always fun yeah. when we all get together and do something like <laughs> when we go yell this at is Tango is the top. Game. <laughs> this is on the top like <laughs> So yeah, it, it's cool, and and I can't wait for uh, you know the hermits in in the UK to get that chance to go and and see the hospital and the carts that are being delivered there, and yeah, it it is really cool. Like hopefully we'll get uh, very soon a map of all the locations that we delivered to, so a little like overview of the world, and then little pin pin you know pins stuck in the map of all the locations that we have carts. Mm -hmm. So that'll be really cool, and then. Yeah, like I think that'll be a nice way for the audience to be like, wow, look at that. Like, we're all part of something really cool. Oh, that's so exciting, Scar. Thank you so much again. You know, as, as I've told my audience uh, in the intro, like every hermit helped, so many members of our audience helped, but Scar, you spearheaded this and that that deserves attribution. I I appreciate you going to the hermits and saying, I know that we love arguing about things, but let's argue about things and then do one of them. We are going to do one of these and it's going to happen and I'm going to make it happen. And I'm just so glad you did. Mad props. Total respect. And, and don't forget to the audience, by the way, I, I like to remind people how crazy that week was. Mm -hmm. We had the charity event. We also wrapped up the King storyline where we built all these crazy um you know i don't even know what that was like oh, a giant it, it maze was, of it was craziness like a, a american gladiator bowser's castle i don't know like yeah we built that in one week oh no my <laughs> my my patreon uh discord was asking about this like did you guys intentionally plan all three of these things to happen at once for just maximum fan excitement and it's like no, we planned no. three things and we didn't really look at a calendar very well and then they all happened to be the same week that's that's hermitcraft you know yeah so we we wrapped up all of <laughs> oh that so gosh. we went crazy we were up till god knows what hour mm -hmm. building the labyrinth then we did the charity stream and right after that we started the rift storyline mm -hmm. and some people did mcc on saturday because the charity event was on sunday oh jeez, yeah and i was uh <laughs> oh yeah well and that's yeah i shaved I, my beard because i had to miss the main charity thing so i did the post game beard shaving thing which, that's right yeah yeah that's right uh, oh my gosh it was that was quite um that i it's so surreal that we made it through that week well thank you again just so much scar and whatever your next uh whatever next project you want to spearhead i want you to know you have my full support i know that's not <laughs> worth a lot because i am politically a stick of dynamite but I am very, very excited to back whatever you do next because you pulled this yeah, one off. It's 
whatever the next charity event is, it's got to it's got to be the right thing. It's got to hit at the right time. And mm-hmm. when, when that comes, yeah, we'll 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 do it again. Yeah. Um, well, and I, I did mention to some of my fans who had said like, well, hey, it's October again soon. Are you guys going to do something again this year? And I expressed and maybe you feel the same way that we wanted to make sure that all the hermits got to show the audience the carts arriving mm-hmm. in their hospitals before before we go back to the audience and ask for more money it's kind of nice to be able to say look we checked on where the money went last time and maybe that doesn't put us on a 12 month cycle but it puts us on a cycle where everybody feels good and has a deep trust you know exactly yeah and it, yeah it, it's to me one thing i've learned i've been doing this for far too long <laughs> just so long like uh, transparency in showing where where the money goes that's so mm-hmm. important to me gamers outreach exceeds in those things excels in those things and i think that's one reason i think a lot of people have a story of being in the hospital them a friend a family member and they could really relate to it and they could see that you know this money was going to a great cause they could actually see it with their eyes and i think that's some of the reasons why it really resonated um i think all the hermits did a great job like my god we finally played battle bane people have been wanting to see that for a decade with from etho so that was good um but yeah yeah. no it it all worked out really well and yeah i hope we have something in the future we'll we'll figure out what the next thing is um i think when hermits do do something we do it big we do it right and Mm -hmm. i think it'll be really cool for whatever that is in the future oh me too so, yeah, y'all keep your eyes out for future hospital visits from other hermits. Those carts are shipping all over the world now. Um, thank you again, Scar, for stopping by to talk about this. I really appreciate your time. And don't forget, Joe, you got a ticket. Make sure you visit Scarland. You got to go to the turnstiles. No, Scarland is a no fly zone. If you fly over Scarland, Hawkeye will shoot you down. So you have to enter okay. through the turnstiles. That is a new Scarland rule. OK, so I'll just I'll just I'll keep. Yeah, two two totems and this on my head that right yeah you got you gotta go uh you gotta go to the turnstile joe and throw it to the ticket taker it's quite the experience is it like is the ticket taker facing green's base or my base uh the, they're facing uh green's base yes okay, and it's cool. the it's the one on the left the zombie on the left awesome i will take the long way around thank you scar <laughs> all right joe have a good rest of the day goodbye Bye. thank you for stopping by goodbye. hey joe oh hey cub hi what can i do for you i flew here immediately joe i got something for you i got a new counterfeit croissant for you to try out okay i'm not hungry yet so let me do some quick (laughs) calisthenics one and two and three (laughs) and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four okay maybe if i take some damage here yeah smacking into some stuff you got it you got it you got it Okay, I'm slowly getting hungry. There we go. Okay. Counterfeit croissant. It. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, it didn't teleport Delicious. me. No, it's actually just it's actually just bread, but it's counterfeit <laughs> croissant. <laughs> oh, I thought it was gonna I thought it was gonna be like a, a reskin uh, uh, of uh, like chorus fruit. Okay. I mean, <laughs> no, it, this is still we're not good. that complex around this here. This is still good too. This is still good too. <laughs> Okay. Thanks. Oh, that was hilarious. You were just like, oh, here I go. Uh, yeah, I was like, I'm <laughs> was gonna not... be down there in the hole. Let's psychologically prepare. No. How's this how's this project coming, Joe? How's this project coming? I see you got some oh, stuff really building well. up now. Yeah, yeah, we're working on some of the three-dimensional stuff that's gonna pop out of the playfield. I haven't designed all the playfield art yet. Um, but the plywood on a pinball machine at the scale would be about three blocks thick. So the glass represents the underside of the plywood. And so you'll uh-huh. see that I've got like lights and stuff that are kind of rising up out of that. Um, oh, very nice, very nice. And then this would be like flush with the surface uh, that'll be like painted and stuff. Um, I've started experimenting with like some rough coloring uh, on the paints with like these uh, reds over here to indicate gotcha. the infrared rollovers. We've got a trap ball that'll go up there, or a captive ball um, representing the UV yep. light. Uh, you know, Joe, I'm wondering. Yeah. Have you considered like uh, adding like actual lights in places in uh, the in the? Board? Yes. So like under here, you see how there's like just plastic or glass here. So mm-hmm. on a real pinball machine, the play field itself would have like glass or plastic, and then clipped underneath would be LED lights. So I'm gonna try uh-huh. and install 
some maybe some redstone controlled lights or something underneath the playfield later. But for right now, I'm just kind of doing the plastics that are called inserts that would go on top of those. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, I would, I would consider maybe trying out some skulk uh, blocks because they can detect like when a player is nearby. Mm. So they they could potentially like when the player would like walk by if they're like quote unquote the the pinball, they could like oh, light up the area. That's you know, when a cool idea. Yeah. Well, I was actually using skulk blocks over here to represent the solar panels on the Chandra X-ray telescope observatory. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Scar and I just put these in. I'm glad you're making progress. I'm glad you're making some progress. Oh, it's me too. Nice. Me too. I, I like. There's so many things like decked out and Ren's boat race and all these mini games I want to play. It's like I got to get my work done so I can go goof off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's really cool. Well, thank you so much for the counterfeit croissants. They were delicious. Yeah, I'll give you a few more. I'll give you a few more just in case oh, you need some. Great, because yeah, I already <laughs> ate both of those. <laughs> so, yay! Thank you, Cub. Hooray! <laughs> All, right. All right, man. I'll let you go to get your uh, replay mod going or awesome. cut down. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Cub. Have a great night, man. Cheers. Cheers. See you, Joe. Just when I thought I was done with this episode, Cub fan showed up. We better wrap it up now before somebody else pops in, like Hypno or Stress or Iskel. They're all back on the server. Ah! Check out their episodes if you haven't already. What I need to do, though, is I need to thank Patreon sponsor Mr. Lance for making this episode pre-roll ad-free and Salem for making this episode mid-roll ad-free. In lieu of that mid-roll ad, I will now present to you a poetry prompt that was inspired by something Scar, good times with Scar, best times with friend, said earlier in the episode. You can take this poetry prompt, write a poem, and share it in the comments section below. And that prompt is... Just go and go. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. <laughs>